Yeah, I'm a little bit stumbling. Uh, um, um, <laughs> I'm kind of stumbling with my words today. I'm uh, always saying Yu-Gi-Oh. The thing is, I w have uh, Yu-Gi-Oh on my left screen, uh, the name, and therefore uh, I always see it. And FX always starting is ending with an O sound as well, so it sounds a little bit. Um, yeah, that's basically the reason why this happens. To the bottom right of Entombed Valley, in the red color, we have Slayers Brown, and his opponent to the top right in the blue color. The Terran player starting for the FXO team. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a tree. Tree against Yu. Uh, <laughs> wow, if I say Yu Gi Oh! one more time, I will do something. I don't know what, but I will definitely do something. But this. Uh, I don't know where this is happening. Uh, okay, so Brown against Tree, and we have a Terran versus Protoss in our last map. Of this first group, later on we'll start here uh, with the second group. We yeah, went about, but well, we talked about the matches already. Three this time uh, with gas once again and a barracks play. So uh, very nice games that we've seen today already. An FXO player and a Slayers player were able to advance with Gumi Ho and Yu-Gi-Oh. And now we have Brown and Tree with the ace match. All of you tune in a little bit later and don't know about the matches that we're going to witness in the second group. Just a quick heads up. We're going to start with Lucky against OGS Mines. We'll, start, uh, we'll, we'll uh, transition into Alicia against Bomber, Avenge against Sniper, and Nada against Ghost Kid. I actually expect a little bit of a crowd here later, especially because Nada is playing. So let's hope that there will be few people watching. We already seen a few foreigners joining us today. And nice, starting here with the Marauders, not going for a Reaper expand, not starting with the Marauder play. So let's see what Tree is up to. We have at the bottom right Brown now with the Cybernetics core and probably starting with the expansion once again. And I certainly doubt that we are going to see a one base play by him here. The few, last few games have been really interesting. Uh, Brown has been playing so much better on the, the uh, on the second map. I really have to say that I was kind of impressed with his performance on Antigua. He did a really, really good job here. And let's see how this is going to work out on this map. Will he be able to take it? And... That's the cast of Shell. First Marauders are out. The Stalker is trying to get a few... Is trying to get a few scouting information here and kill the SCV. Detects the scout of his opponent, takes down the SCV, which is obviously really, really annoying at this point for the turret. So he is not able to get the second scout in, which is something that you always want to do. You always want to get a second scout in there just to confirm that there is going to be an expansion to be super, super safe. But at this point, not going to happen. Once again, the follow up with the two additional gates, which is exactly what we expected a total play in this matchup on a map like this. Standard play here for uh, for Brown, but Tree is going to be aggressive. We talked about the Marauders early on already, and he's moving down here once again, trying to kite these units. And this is a bit of a nice position here, using the uh, using the one barracks that is a bunker that he's just building to his advantage. Very nice job. And the Stalker is about to die. He's taking down the Stalker and he already eliminated a fair amount of workers as well. There is still one SCV and look at that. He's able to complete the bunker once again. It is actually just so nice to see how aggressive Tree is. I really love this play. A very aggressive Terran player and trying to punish his opponent. So Tree is doing very well here. And Brown on 30 supply though is moving out now with the three gates done. He is trying to take down the bunker and he will be able to do it even with one SCV repairing. This is not gonna happen. He's trying to snipe one of the sentries, but it's not gonna work. Maybe sniping, yes. Focusing now the harvesters, trying to make sure that at least a few of these probes are gone. Taking down another one and not able to get... Oh, 
Smith is getting the... Uh, yes, he's getting the uh, sentry. 20 harvesters against 23 now, but two base against one. He was not able to force a cancel on the Nexus this time. It worked on Atana, it did not work on a Tomb Valley. So, yeah, at this point, Tree and Brown looking pretty good here. I love this early aggression. I really love this early aggression. It's just awesome to watch these games. All the matches today have been really entertaining. And now Tree already starting with his factory. Stim is halfway done. He has the second orbital on its way and therefore the second new. Even a Reaper trying to get some additional information here. Has to be careful as Brown is now moving out and he's like, okay, well, listen up, buddy. You just lost a fair amount of resources. Let's see if I can put up a little bit of three gate pressure and punish you for it. I did it on Antigua and I'm just trying to do it once again. Might just work here. Moving up the ramp, a few units in position, a few SCVs to repair, and Brown is like, ah, well, I don't really have to do damage here, but at least I'm forcing a little bit of a reaction, forcing additional bunkers as well. And Stim is nearly done. Starport is on its way, the transition into the Robo. Standard style here for Brown. the harvest account. We have 36 probes against 32 uh, SCVs, but obviously the mule advantage for Tree. Resources lost in this game so far, 975 to 831. <laughs> Pretty odd number. 9 harvester killed to 4. 9 probes died, 4 SCVs. And double forge play. Brown showed on the last map already that he really likes a uh, gateway heavy style and uh, with the double forge that he's building now he can uh, make sure that he is getting all these upgrades. He's already getting rid of the uh, destructible rocks as well so he can start with the third base, can uh, walk towards the third and uh, throw down another nexus and uh, well the medivacs are already building. And this is kind of the timing when you usually get aggressive as a terror player. You try to get those medivacs into the picture and then you can drop your opponent, try to uh, bait him into an uncomfortable position uh, and maybe use those high and low ground positions to your advantage. So let's see if Tree is moving out with the first two medivacs and giving him a little bit of pressure while Brown is starting with double forge upgrades. Plus one, plus one on its way. And here we have the army. There it is. There it is. The bio army for Brown. And starting to drop, but there is already nice. He sees it. He sees the observer. Oh, that was close. Nearly. Watch this. And not dropping anymore. It's like, okay, well, the drop is probably not going to work. You already saw what I'm doing. But still, I can get a bit of a glimpse here. And takes down the pilot. No chance. High growth vision granted by the two medivacs. Takes down the pilot. And now. Brown just trying to mirror the movements of his opponent, making sure that he's in a position where he can attack and oh, concussive shell is done! Yep, and the stock is going to be Nice pickup, nice pick, uh, pick up here by Tree. 86 supply gets 81. Third base building now for Tree. Getting ahead here a bit in economy. More medivacs are trying to drop into his opponent's main base. And let me have a quick look, but I don't think there's anything. No, he doesn't have any units in position. Uh oh, and he has another force at the uh, the entrance to the natural and the third, trying to put up the pressure, and this is, works quite well. Oh, he is just trying to delay the third base, and he's doing a really good job. He has a third on his own. The command center is nearly done. The orbital tech will start fairly soon, and he has upgrades as well. Plus one attack is starting. And he's going for the second. Uh, for the armory and the second engineering bay. And ooh, dropping in here. Let's see. Oh, is he able? Yes, he's going to get one of the forges. Here. Getting one of the forges, not losing anything. Job well done. And another drop here. But retreating once again. Oh, actually not. Trying to do some damage here. It is just nice to see how Tree plays. A very aggressive drop style that he's using now to uh, force his opponent. Oh, using the positioning here. Very interesting to take down one of the gateways. But this is actually this is just really well done uh, by Tree. He's dropping everywhere. He's putting up the pressure. He's uh, making sure that there's no third base. Doing a little bit of damage with his drops in the main base. Taking down one of the forges. 
And this is so annoying for Brown to deal with. And Dree at the same time is also uh, expanding. So he's getting into a better position by the minute. And another Forge dies. He's stuck on 1-1. One, one. And already a, Bra a tree researching plus two attack, plus one armor. So doing a really amazing job here. Brown is in a bad position. He is on 116 supply at 129. But if those drops continue... Is he actually picking off one of the medivacs here? Yes, one of the medivacs just died. Sorry, we jumped into a different position with the observer. But one of the medivacs died and he was full. So a bit of an upset here, but once again doing some damage at the Merchal. How many harvesters did he kill in total now? 17. 17 harvester kill. Harvester count is 52 to 59 SCVs. And the mules. Third base is ready. The observer, the probe spotted the third. And, uh, well, three mineral lines, three mules. This is quite something. And tree does not really have to attack. He's losing a few units here. He can, but he does not have to. Attacking to the choke point is dangerous, and he can just wait. He knows his opponent is on two bases. So he can just take it easy for now. He's overcoming a little bit to this. Oh, moving in here. Taking down the Colossus. Job well done, but the force fields are decent. And she is losing a fair amount of uh, units, but uh, the force fields now trapping the Zealots. He needs to be a little bit more careful here. I don't like that he's overextending. He knows that he's in a great position. So why just walking up the ramp and risking to get force fielded? This is not really making a lot of sense. Um, he needs to be a little bit more careful about how he approaches this. He's doing a great job with his draw play. But now that the third is starting, now he can think about attacking. But he needs to defend against the zealots that have been warped in though. They are just entering the vicinity of the third base. We don't have it on screen just yet, but they are at the third. There it is. Yeah, he's doing a fair amount of harvests here. He doesn't have a lot of uh, units in uh, position. Finally getting in here. How many harvests he actually lose? Another five, okay. 152 supply against 116 plus two armor coming up. And thanks to the fact that she took down both of the forges, Brown just about to finish plus two plus two. So Tree actually a bit ahead in his upgrades. Getting another base now, get, trying to get a fourth. He does not really want to attack his opponent at this point. His 30 supply ahead, and uh, Brown is really moving out now. I kind of doubt that he's going to do this. Why would he? Upgrade complete. He's probably going to wait until he's really maxed out, until he has his additional attack. He started a high, the high temple attack. Yeah, the pylon is going to be spotted. What about the Viking count? Seven. Seven Viking. Then he goes, he's coming up right now. Yeah, he can definitely engage here. Nice split. The Vikings taking down the first, the first of the yeah, the first of the Colossal. The second one is dying as well. And just look at Tree moving across the map here with his army. Killing one, uh, one of the Archons. And another one is going to die as well. The Archons are going to die. Killing the last one. These Marauders are doing a ton of damage. 135 supply for Tree against 87. He's doing a great job here. Resources lost for the Protoss play. Nearly 10,000 against 8,000. So job well done by Tree. He has a 40 supply advantage. He's getting personal cloaking for his ghosts. He is getting also the plus 3 attack upgrade. Plus 2 armor. And he has the first few ghosts in his army. The first two of them. And well, this is looking better by the minute for Tree. He has the fourth base now, is starting to uh, fly the command center to the mineral patches. Is it already a orbital? Let's see. No, orbital tech is not just done yet. He might actually just, yeah, he goes for the planetary. In this spot, it makes perfect sense to go for the planetary tech. But yeah, additional ghosts joining the army. We have a second uh, starport, and this is looking so good for Trey. Is really looking for for the FXO player. Slayer's Brown has a bit of a problem in his hand. He's going for plus three, plus three, which is obviously great, but it's really hard for him to come back into this match. He doesn't even have the uh, uh, Storm tag. Let me confirm this. Yes, Storm is not done. And uh, the, yeah, there's just the, uh, the the income. The income for three is insane. And three is controlling the map. Has the Zalnaga Watchtower. Plus three armor has started, plus three attack is done.
The Viking count is at 6, he's getting additional ones as we speak. The Colossi, uh, there is only one of them, the second one is being built. So he has like the perfect Viking count, he can get uh, another 2 or 3, but basically doesn't need all too many of them. 192 supply against 152 scans going off, just confirming uh, about uh, getting in the idea about the positioning of his opponents. Ah, the observer flying right into the scan. But yeah, with well, the scan, it's just getting an idea about the positioning of, of Brown. The uh, storm upgrade has been started, but well, Tree's going to attack fairly soon. And he is going to take on this army, and without Storm it's not going to be easy, especially with all these ghosts in the mix and the Vikings. This is the perfect time to attack for, for Tree. His opponent doesn't have plus 3, plus 3, he's even getting nukes here. Now the three upgrades will be done for Brown in a second, then he has a slight upgrade advantage. But still with EMPs against no, against no Storm, it's going to work quite well. Here we go, trying to get into position, using Stim, he's kind of afraid to cluster his units, but the Vikings doing a ton of damage, and nice EMPs, just look at the army supply dropping for Brown here, and stimming in is FXO3, doing a lot of damage here, the Archon dies way too fast, and everything is just obliterated, Tree is taking this, the game is over, Three advances, Brown dropping to code B. Guys, this is the last game of the day. And here are our results of the first group. Actually not the last game of the day, but the last game for the group. We have now uh, Gumiho advancing, uh, Dreamer dropping to code B. Lua is advancing as well as is Yu-Gi-Oh! and FXO3. This is pretty cool. We have awesome matches, every single game went into a final match, into a final map. So that is actually... Uh, I don't even remember when we had this last time, that is actually awesome. We had a lot of Soccer of 2 this morning, uh, so match point for all of these guys. And yeah, it was a blast casting for you ladies, we have uh, already 4pm and in two additional hours we will have the second group. And there it is. Oh, <laughs> here we have the observer screen again. That was not really what they intended to do. But yeah, the, the other matches, we talked a little bit about it earlier already. Lucky is going to face Mines. We have Alicia against Bomber. Avenge against Sniper in another Zerg versus Protoss. And a TBT with Nana against Ghost King. Uh, and Kale Bion. Very interesting games, very excited matches. Wolf will join me for the next group. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed the show and I really hope that you are going to be back for the second round today, for the second group. I'll see you later and it was a lot of fun casting with you. Keep in mind all the foreigners that are actually watching right now that are in Korea and think about coming to the studio later on. Definitely make it happen. You can listen to the English stream. There has been a new setup today. So with transmitters and earphones that you get at the uh, desk at the entrance, you can listen to the English stream by watching, uh, while watching the games. GSL Code 8, round of 48 with Calder. The first group is over. I'll see you in two hours, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.